Oh boy. Well, good evening. Here I am. Oh, why? Why, oh, why is my thing up there? I don't know what the heck is going on. There we go. Fixed. Fixed. Anyways, here we are. We made it to another week. Um, I finished my class yesterday, my intercession class that I was taking. It was long. It was grueling. It was actually pretty interesting, though. So, um, yeah, it's over, though. I still have a paper to write for that. I have two other papers to write during my break <laughs> because there's no rest until I graduate, basically. Um, but, yeah, so uh, class is over, and I have a couple weeks until... Spring classes start now, thankfully. So I should get to stream more, um, at least for the next couple of weeks, which would be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I am greatly looking forward to it. Um, I've been looking forward to this a lot because I just, you know, I love to do this and I don't get to do it nearly as much as I would like to. Anyways, that uh, that's what's going on with school. Um, my husband started school too, so he started his master's in teaching program, um, and, uh, so far so good, uh, seems like not too terribly taxing yet. He's going to have to do, uh, on-site teaching thing in March, but until then everything is online and asynchronous. So that's, that makes it, you know. So in some ways, asynchronous classes makes it more difficult to keep on track, but it also gives you a lot more freedom um, to, you know, plan your own schedule. So the big news, though, is that I got my MRI results back. They actually came back on Tuesday. Um, so keeping in mind, I got these results back on Tuesday. Um, and yeah, totally sus, Monty. You just wait until you hear this BS. Um, I got the results back on Tuesday and it's a really good thing that I had the MRI, um, because my neck is messed up. Um, and probably other places in my spine are also, an absolute wreck, but here, I'll tell you what the, I'll read to you some of what the, the findings from my MRI were. Um, they said my mild cervical kyphosis, apex to C5, craniocervical junction and subalaxial alignment are within normal limits. Vertebral body height is maintained, multi-level spondylosis and degenerative disc disease, Type 2 reactive end plate marrow changes, C5, C6, and C6, C7. So the bones in your spine have letters and numbers. And what that means is C6 means cervical vertebra number six. So, you know, from the head, from the top down, they, they number them. And so um, when it says mild cervical kyphosis, that means that instead of having a curve in my neck that you know, is a C curve with the, the, the curvy part of the C going forward, mine goes the other direction. It goes, you know, backwards, um, which means that like my neck is hunching over, um, because of loss of height in my discs and stuff. So that's one thing. Um, the reactive end plate marrow changes means that um, the, so inside of your, your bones, you have red marrow that, um, is healthy marrow that makes blood cells and stuff. And when they get, when it gets damaged by either disease or injury, it can change. Um, it has this, what they call a, a type two reactive change, which changes your good, healthy red marrow to yellow fatty marrow and so on my between my c5 and my c6 and then also the c6 and c7 um there is that kind of change in my marrow 
from all the damage that has been done to those vertebrae. Um, and then, you know, it's like they say that C2, C3, everything looks okay. Uh, um, C3, C4, they say I have what they call a shallow disc osteophyte complex. And what that is, is like along the edge of the, the, um, the vertebrae, you know, it's got like this little round part along the edge of the vertebrae, bone spurs are growing. And, um, that's what an osteophyte complex is. So, um, C3, C4, it's a shallow. And it says that it mildly effaces the ventral subarachnoid space. That's the space that your spinal column goes through. So, um, it, that means that it's like the, this complex is on the part of my vertebrae where it contacts my spinal column and it's pressing inward into my spinal column space into the subarachnoid space and it has reduced the effective canal diameter to 11 millimeters at the c3 c4 c4 c5 i have it says a broad based disc protrusion contacts and flattens ventral cord surface so basically my c4 c5 the disc in between there is um is protruding into my spinal canal and flattening my spinal cord um and the and it's reduced the the volume of you know the diameter of my spinal canal there to 10 millimeters um and then i also at that level i have what they call uncovertebral hypertrophy and you have these little there's like little joints that are like on the sides of your your vertebrae that make a canal for nerves to go out into the rest of your body and so I have got um I've got stenosis neural foraminal stenosis um <clears throat> on both the left and right on the left it's moderate and the right side wait no on the left it's severe and on the right side, it's moderate at C4, C5, C5, C6, another broad-based disc osteophyte complex that nearly completely effaces the ventral subarachnoid space. So it's basically filled in that whole space um, with bone fragments, you know, like little bony uh, protrusions. Um, so it's like almost fused those two vertebrae together. Um, and it has also reduced you know my spinal canal volume there facet hypertrophy produces severe bilateral neural foraminal stenosis so there's another place where i've got severe compression of nerves two so far um c67 another broad-based disc osteophyte complex complex that is compressing my spinal canal uh mildly thickened ligament there facet arthrosis produces mild bilateral neural foraminal stenosis and c7 to t1 they said there's nothing going on there so basically my whole neck um i've got bone spurs growing all over on my discs like in between my discs and the discs are bulging and degrading uh and in part because of you know my ehlers danlos syndrome makes all of those things weaker um, so the, the, the tissues of my discs are weak and they're rubbing on bony growths between my vertebrae. And the little tunnels out of my spinal canal to the rest of, you know, like to my face and um, upper part of my, you know, like shoulders and upward um, are being compressed in their little canals because they are, uh, yeah, because there's like bony growths there too. And also um, that's what stenosis is. It's like growing extra bone inside. And if you notice every once in a while, my voice will like flutter. It's because of this nerve damage that I'm suffering from this stuff in my neck. So it's given me like a, 
a, a tremor in my voice. And it's, you know, the, it's why the eustachian tube in my left ear doesn't work. It's paralyzed the little muscle that opens and closes uh, my eustachian tube. And that's been going on for several years now. Um, I've been having problems with that. Um, I got numb spots on my face all the time. Uh, they, and, and you want to hear the real kicker is that they've had these results in since Tuesday. And my doctor has not contacted me yet regarding them. Despite the fact that I'm having all these problems and she knows I've sent her messages. So I'm seeing a new doctor on Friday. She's fucking fired. I'm done. I'm done messing around with her. She's been negligent and I've kept all my emails and messages and stuff and printed them out and you know I'm I'm saving them for my husband just in case I die uh then he can um sue the living pants off of her you know um and just make a stink with the hospital system because they've been really negligent in this whole thing um so basically yeah I'm a mess and um it's really unpleasant, and I've been really unwell. Um, and I'm doing the best I can to just, like, keep things going, but I have not felt good. I have not felt good. Um, and sitting and doing the, the stuff at, you know, like, I can mine and I take lots of breaks and stuff. Um, house tours are a little more intensive. I have to talk a lot and I'm having problems with my voice and my throat and swallowing and speaking. Um, and so, you know, I'll do as much as I can tonight because I want to. Uh, but I can't promise that will go for a long, long time. Um, and also the reason that all of this happened um, and why it got so bad uh, recently, um, I think what's going on is I have, you know, I have that psoriatic arthritis. Well, they're not really, they're not sure if it's psoriatic arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis. There's no blood test to differentiate the two. Um, my son has psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis because we have this HLA B27 gene. So I've got genes for congenital adrenal hyperplasia for Ehlers-Danlos syndrome <laughs> and for psoriatic arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. And the way it looks in with what's going on in my neck, it looks like it's actually ankylosing spondylitis. And when I got COVID, it made it flare up. So it flared up and caused a whole lot of inflammation in my neck and a whole lot more bone spurs to grow in my vertebrae. And so I don't know what they're going to do. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. I may have to have surgery um, to fix it. I, I don't know. I'm going to go see this new doctor on Friday and hopefully she'll send me over to rheumatology because, um, that's probably the best place to start. Um, I used to take Humira, which I don't know if you know what that is, but it's, a uh, an immune suppressant. It's a TNF uh, alpha inhibitor. So, uh, it inhibits what they, what's called tumor necrosis factor alpha, um, which <laughs> it is basically a thing that causes cells to die, you know, tumor necrosis. But, you know, when you have these other things, um, you have dysfunctional TNF alpha. Um, anyways, so I was on Humira for two years and it helped. And uh, my, my problem, you know, the ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, whatever it is, went into remission. Um, and I was really pretty good for a while, but obviously it's been kind of simmering for a while now um, because when they look at it, they're like, well, this has been going on for a long, long time. And I could have told them that. I mean, I've been complaining about this for years and just been called a hysterical woman and, you know, nothing's wrong with you. Go home, um, you know, go do yoga or whatever, uh, <laughs> you know typical bullshit. Anyways, that's the health update. Um, it's not good. It's not good. And I don't really know how it's gonna, uh, be rectified at this point, but I, and I also ended up paying cash out of 
pocket for my MRI because the insurance company kept denying it. And then it rolled over to the new year and, um, and I had to pay cash. So, um, I did a GoFundMe with my friends and stuff on Facebook and my friends and family really stepped up and, um, paid for my MRI. So thankfully that got covered by my GoFundMe. Um, <laughs> but I don't know what's coming next. And so hopefully it won't be uh, ridiculous. Anyways. Yeah. Here we are. So we're going to go. Wait a minute. Here we are. We're going to go back to. Um, we're going to go back to Mist 7. Because that's where we were. And I'm going to try to remember who's which house we were at last. I should have written it down. Of course, you know me. I did not write it down. Didn't write it down. All right. So let's see here. Um, we're going to go to Limsa. And if anybody comes on and wants me to go visit their house, I'd be happy to do that as well. Um, I'm going to go as long as I'm able won't it probably won't be super long and i'm sorry uh for the lack of streams and the short streams um but you know hopefully um things will get straightened out you know if they send me to rheumatology and they put me back on a uh a biologic i might start to feel better again um so, and I should have, my eye had been flaring up too. So it's in my eye as well. Like I get my eyes turn red and it looks like I have pink eye. So it wasn't pink eye on New Year's. It was actually a flare up of the autoimmune crap. Okay. Residential district. Oh my gosh. And we've got new awards too. Oh, <gasps> you did. Oh, good. I need to get caught up on that I'm not caught up on it you know what we shouldn't go yet we should not go to people's houses yet you know what we have I forgot um I'll go to the free company house because it's bigger they put in a bunch of new stuff they put in a bunch of new items um so we'll preview items first we'll take a look at some of the new items um is this really bad? I don't know. Let me see. I don't know if this will be better than going to my own little place. I actually have some of the new stuff in my house. I haven't taken down the Christmas decor in the free company house yet. I need to do that. I still have it all decorated for, for Christmas. Let's see. Here's, this is a good space for previewing stuff. Let's see. So I got, I got to do the Manderville stuff. I'm not up to date. I'm still haven't done the Garuda Chicky Primal. I haven't done anything because I've just been so unwell. Um, mostly what I've been doing, like during class this week, I did mining and botany in between doing stuff in class and um, just like trying to make some money, uh, you know. Because there's more housing plots that got put in. 1,500 of the red poetic things per weapon. Oh, cool. Well, I'll have to get caught up. Let's see. Let's preview indoor furnishings. So there's all kinds of new stuff. Um, we've got an alpine pillar, which is just, you know, it's your basic pillar. Your basic pillar, um, housing pillar, but it's the Alpine style. Um, that's actually pretty nice. That's a nice pillar, you know, for just about any space. Um, it is a different color of wood than any of the other uh, housing things. So, you know, I still think that it's a nice pillar and can be used. I like that it has a little stone thing around the bottom. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is the Ishgard. That's for the Ishgard houses. So let's see what's next. A waterfall partition. Oh boy, everyone is going to be so happy with this. Let's here take a look. 
So there is your waterfall partition. It goes all the way to the ceiling. It drops water into, you know, a thing here at the bottom. Um, it has its own lighting coming from the bottom. Uh, pretty cool. I like it. It's pretty cool. That's a good addition. I think that was a nice addition. Uh, let's see. What's next? Here's your Alpine partition to match your Ishgard residences and your Alpine pillar. So it's got, you know, little stuff up at the top. It's got the little stone at the bottom. Nice. You get the Alpine partition door. And honestly, I really like this. I really, really like this one. Check it out. I mean, that's probably the nicest door partition that we've got. And it looks like it will actually match um, the Alpine partition. It better match. I mean, seriously, if it doesn't match, uh, you know, that would just be typical. But there's that. It's a nice door. It's got a handle. You know, um, looks good from both sides. Nice door. Finally, we've got the Hanish screen, which is pretty cool. There's a fancy uh, divider for use in your, your uh, you know, Thavnarian uh, themed houses. Pretty cool. I like it. There is a Hanish bookshelf partition which is really tall. Look at the size of this thing. Um, that's pretty cool. There you go. It's a bookshelf and a partition in one. One item and you get drawers, books, an archway. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't think it's dieable. It is dieable. <gasps> oh, let's see if we can do the die preview. Yes. Let's see. Let's see how it looks with different colors. So you can dye it. It's really only that top part that changes. The drawers don't change. Um, but still, I mean, that's cool. I approve. I approve of this item. That's pretty neat. I like it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. And I, you know what? We'll go to my house for this. The simple sink. So Finally, y'all, they put in a sink. It's like a little kitchen sink. That's a good question, Monty. There's another question I have, and you'll see. I bet you'll be able to guess what that question is when I show you my new kitchen. Well, it's mostly still the same old kitchen, but, you know... I did change it a little bit because I made myself a simple sink. And there it is. There's my simple sink. It's got a cabinet underneath. It's got a faucet and a spout. And it's like, you know, uh, got a drain. The only thing it doesn't have is water. No water. So you know what I did is I floated a, an aqueduct under here to have a little water in the sink. But the water does not turn on, unlike the basin, which is kind of sad. You know, the, the bathroom basin has water. And I thought that was so cool. And I was really hoping this had water, but there's no water. But it's still, you know, there it is. It's your sink. And... It kind of fits. I mean, I kind of like the little kitchen, you know, that I've got here um, with the sink right in front of the window. You can even put, you know, like one of the longer basins next to it or something, uh, the basin sinks and, you know, have fun with that. Um, but there it is. That's the sink. Let's see. Preview indoor furnishings. 
the warrior of light there our dishes are always done no water needed that's true because you know we ninja those dishes they're always clean or you know we have friends who do the dishes for us I, these are not slaves in my house they're just my friends all right so let's see what else we got we've got a crystal tower phasm escape you move this back a little so you can get a idea there's your crystal tower phasm escape pretty cool pretty cool i like it um there's an earth's fount phasm escape which is also pretty cool i like that one a lot actually that's pretty neat i love it all right now we have some new furnishings we have a rattan sofa now I built a couple of these and they are in my living room. So, whoops, I'll show you them here. There they are. They're dyeable. I dyed them off white, you know, uh, the snow, snow white. Um, so they're pretty. They've got flowers. They got vines. They got these nice little cushions with this little stripey fabric on it. Um, they're nice. I like it. I like them. Good addition. Let's see what's next. A Hannish chair. So here you have a little tiny chair. Look how low, look at how little that chair is. I mean, it's, I guess it's the same height as this. And these other chairs, you know, but it's just like, you know, it's an itty bitty little chair and it's pretty. It's red. Um, it is dyeable. So let's see how it looks with different colors. You can the wood and the cushion dyes. That looks pretty good. It seems to take, you know, like that red, that cushion is very vibrant. It takes dye nicely. All right. So there's that, um, the Hanish bed. Yeah, it is. I think that it looks pretty good because the, the cushion is a little, a little bit brighter. Um, so here's the Hanish bed, which is lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. Also, it's dyeable. So let's take look at that. You can have a you can have a ruby red bed. You can have a cherry pink bed. Any color you want, you can have it. And uh, it, the dye looks pretty good. Not perfect, but you know, I mean, I think that this here the pattern gets a little bit. Yeah, it's a Razat Han bed. That's what it is. It's the Hanish bed and and it's dyeable. And that's finally we get a bed that actually has linens that you can change color to match your decor, um, which I think was needed. So that is pretty cool. There you are. Pretty nice. I like it. You know, I should change the name of the stream. Uh, really to be like furniture preview. Well, I'll, I'll rename it when I do the thing. Okay. So we've got the fairy round table next and it's a table that it's, you know, it's like a resin, a resin table or something, you know, you can, I can think of so many things to do with this. It's so cute. That is adorable, but I'm not really sure what it takes to make it. Um, it's also dyeable. So you can die. Look at that. You can dye the bowl. Oh, look how beautiful that is. I love this. I love this item. I think that is so adorable. And I can't wait to see what people do with this in their houses. Um, let's actually look at the crafting requirements for that. So let's look at the crafting log. I think I probably have the recipe. Very... Very round table. It takes miracle apple lumber. Um, uh, this is easy. 
Oh my gosh. Miracle Apple Lumber, eight pieces. Six Ambrosial Water, which is, I mean, these are not, um, these are not timers. Luna Tender Blossoms. Um, and those you just get from, you know, smacking around some Luna Tenders on the moon. Um, and then you can make yourself that adorable table. I love it. That is perfect. Wonderful. I'm going to make some. going to make them. So let's see. Let's continue previewing these furnishings. So the other, the next thing on the list is a Hanish round table. So there is the Hanish round table, which is very pretty. Um, is it dyeable? Yes. All of this Hanish stuff we can dye. So let's see. Um, and it looks nice. I mean, that dies pretty nicely. Oh, I can't wait to see what people do with this stuff. That's beautiful. You know, I didn't look to see if the Hanish, the Hanish screen is also dyeable. Let's see how that looks. Wow, that's bright. Uh, that's pretty good. That looks all right. Kind of cool. Nice. All right. So let's see, where were we? The Hanish table lamp. And there it is. This is a nice little table lamp. Look at that. It's very bright. It's like, uh, let's see, is it as bright as the glade lamp i think it probably is as bright as the glade lamp or as the glade lantern oh gosh i can't get can't get it up on the thing there maybe i need to do this here Let me just try again let's see so i believe it is identical in lumens to the glade lantern looks about the same pretty it is not dyeable you know it's like just your little standard table lantern next the flower bouquage or bouquage i'm not you know it's a bouquage it says beautiful addition to home decor or archaic punishment for offending flora perhaps it's both <laughs> We do. We have to uh, make sure that it's just as bright. So here we have this lovely little, it's a cage filled with flowers. Look at that. And, you know, you can set it on a thing or you can do the place from storage glitch to make it like hang from your ceiling, whatever you want to do. It would look pretty in this room with this rattan sofa. It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, it is also dyeable and I think it's just the little base at the bottom that, yeah, it doesn't change the flowers or the, the, the metal, but it's just the basket that changes color, but cute item, charcoal iron. Here we have a charcoal iron for the, you know, for those warriors of light who desire to have their pants seams be crisp you can have an iron I don't know if it does anything like if you can turn it off and on uh, or something um, you can dye it though it's dyeable so you can have a pink iron if you want purple pretty cool Time-worn thaumaturgic array. Wait, let's see what it says. This household instrument will smooth the wrinkles from your clothing, thereby smoothing the wrinkles from your forehead. Do not apply directly to the forehead. <laughs> Silly. All right. Time-worn thaumaturgic array. It's, you know, it's for all of you potion makers. 
All you witchy types who want to make your little witch's den. Here you go. Look at that. It is. It's a nice alchemy set. It's pretty cool. It's got a cauldron with a flame underneath. It's got some bottles. There's one of them knocked over. There's some little ingredients, some books, and one open book page and a candle. So, you know, things that like people would have built out of a bunch of different items. There's one item with all the stuff. So pretty cool. I like it. I don't know if you can dye that one. Oh, you can. It can it's also dyeable. And I it's your cauldron. The cauldron is the thing that changes color. Pretty cool. Very nice. Next. The darkest hourglass. It's an old chronometer that measures the silence as much as time. Here it is. Darkest hourglass. I don't see any sand moving. And I don't know if that's just because I haven't actually placed it or not. Um, but there's, you know, another little thing to put on your on a table, on a shelf. It's a tabletop item. A classical water jug. Here is just, you know, a simple pitcher. If you just want a pitcher, there it is pitcher without everything else and you can dye that as well and it takes dye pretty nice I can have my little I can have my little blue teapot if I want there it is cool Let's see what else we got we've got a toy cooking set for your you know chefs in in the works you got your little chocobo knife and some tomatoes, an orange, a carrot. Looks like they're made out of wood. Little plate looks like it's made out of wood. So you can have that along with your little uh, little chef's play set. Um, cute for those of you with children or um, who want to pretend you have children in game. <laughs> Here we have an exciting balloon. It's really big. What the heck is this? Look at that. It's massive. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure that people will find things to do with this. You know, I can see I can see people using this for stuff. Pretty cool. I'm I'm guessing this might be something from the Loperets. The unblinking stare of this balloon is reminding you what a great time you're having, just like in the Excitatron 6000. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. All right, next up, a pudding pudding. And, um, whoops, let me get this. I gotta put it up on the table so you can see it. It's a pudding pudding. Gosh, why can't I got, why can't I grab this? Here we go. There you go. It's a pudding pudding. It's really a flan. I mean, it looks like a flan. You know, because it's got this caramely stuff up here. And then there's a little puddle of caramel underneath it. Um, but, you know, if you want to call a flan a pudding, that's fine. It's technically a pudding. It's a custard. Which is not really the same thing. But, you know, we'll let them get away with it. Delicious pudding in the shape of a pudding. What's not to understand is the text. And I'm just like, hmm, well, I understand what you're saying. But it's a flan. Because I've made many flan, you know, and basically the flan cooks with that caramely stuff at the bottom. And then when you flip it out onto the dish, the caramelized sugar that was at the bottom that has now formed a sauce kind of runs down the side and ends up as a puddle underneath. So that's a flan. It's a flan, but it's adorable and I like it. And I'm going to make some. Can be used 10 times. Of course, it's a housing item. Lame stats, but you know, that will deter people from eating it. Okay, so a Far Eastern Stained Crystal Roundel. This, I am going to make one of these for down in my bedroom in this house. Whoops, I got to find a spot on the wall where I can put it. Um, let's find a blank wall spot. There, right there. There's a blank wall spot. Let's put this up on the wall. 
and my wall spots not quite big enough but you know you can get the idea look at that it's beautiful I love it it's like the only blank spot on my wall is right there but um pretty I like it I'm gonna make one I'm gonna put it in in this room I'm gonna put it where this stained glass window is I'm gonna put it up here um, and get rid of that stained glass so there's the far eastern stained crystal roundel and it is not hard to make I can make these um, if you want one you know hit me up I can make it for you uh, Hanish pendant wall light so this is like uh, kind of like you know we got the um, oh, gosh that's so cool I love it look at that look at that adorable wall lamp <gasps> hmm I am gonna make some of these uh, are they I wonder if they're purchasable Shop selling price, 3,000 gil. You can buy this from the vendor for 3,000 gil. I'm going to have to look on the housing vendor. That's an awesome lamp. It's so cool. It's got the little rainbow colored stuff around it. It's got the little things hanging down, you know, little pendant lights. It's very bright, nice and bright. It's brighter than the other ones. I like that lamp. Good job. Enigma wall chronometer. Where did it go? It's an enigma. I don't know where it went. There it is. Here we go. Whoops. So there's your enigma wall chronometer. Pretty cool. Gears, all that business. Here's one of my favorite things. A fairy door. Look at this look look at this you can put this on your wall oh whoops <gasps> darn it look how cute that is that is adorable i love it i i honestly i love this so cute so cute all right, and then we have the Infernal Arch Fiend Cloak. So here's your, you know, your boss trophy. Um, gosh, do I have anywhere that I can put this? That There's not something on the wall. No, I don't. I don't have anywhere empty. Maybe right here. Let's try right here. Underneath the Titania wing, you can get an idea. There it is. Big, shiny, red and purpley particle effect. Pretty cool. And now the piece de resistance, the last thing, the Hanish rug. Y'all, we finally have a cool patterned carpet. It is not dyeable, but look at that carpet. That's classy. That's bright. It's colorful. It looks nice. The colors are crisp. The design, you know, the pattern on it is nice and crisp. Um, pretty cool. And you can buy that from the vendor as well. 5,000 gil. So let's take a look and see which of these things are actually on the vendor. Oh, that's the material supplier. I think my lady is upstairs. Here she is. So some of these things are on the vendor. So let's see what's new here. Um, it looks like there's no new additions. No new additions to the um, interiors. To the fixtures. So there you can buy the Hanish chair. You can buy the Charlian chair from the last one. So those are on the vendor. You can buy the Hanish bed from the vendor. It's 5,000 gil. So those are on the vendor as well. Let's see what else is here. 
You can buy the Hannish Round Table. And let's see. That's it. There's nothing else new on this on this tab. It's all the same stuff. Except for the, the Hannish Round Table was added. And it is only 2,000 gil. Let's see. Partitions. Let's see what new partitions, if any. The Hannish screen is on the partitions tab. Um, and the Hannish bookshelf partition. You can buy that from the vendor as well. 3,500 gil. There you go. You do not have to spend money on the market board or pay a crafter to make you a bookshelf now. A bookshelf partition. It's on the vendor. There you go. Um, what else? Uh, that's it. That's the only new thing there. Everything else is the same. So let's see what else we've got. Shelves, rugs, and lighting. Um, got the Alpine doormat. We got that last time. And you got the Charlian rug and the Hannish rug this time are on there now. Um, and the Hannish pendant wall light is there as well for 3000 gil. So you can have really cool pendant lights in your house. Cheap, cheap. I'm pleased. I am super pleased with all of these additions. That is awesome. Let's take a look at the others tab. See what is new here. So of course you've got your, um, your new phasma scapes. So we have a nice collection of phasma scapes. Now there's your Alpine pillar. Um, let's see. I think that might be the only thing that's on there new. Yeah, that's the only new thing added, but that's pretty cool. So lots of nice new things. Um, exterior stuff might be on the vendor. Uh, we'll take a look at the new exterior items that they added. So here we are. I put up my, um, my florist's walls. I just put them back up after Christmas was over. Let's see here. So, up, oh, whoops. So we need to housing. We need to preview outdoor furnishings because there are some new things that they've added. Um, there is a low garden hedge. Check that out. There you go. This little hedge. Partition. I like it. There is a simple fountain. Now I want to tell you this simple fountain. Look how lovely. I love this item. It requires an item called white granite to craft it, um, which there is a place on the market board for white granite, but there has never been a piece of white granite put up for sale or sold on Midgard Sarmer. So I'm not sure where the white granite comes from. I'm going to guess that it comes from, um, you know, submersibles. Um, so nobody has this item yet. But it's pretty cool. And I'm hoping that, you know, someday I'll be able to have one of these in my yard. I love it. Then there is the Jinrikisha which is, you know, your little rickshaw. It's a rickshaw. So there's your rickshaw. Pretty cool. Rickshaw. If you want one in your yard, my yard's kind of small. I think I'm going to pass. There is a lemonade stand. You can put your retainer out at the lemonade stand. Look at that. It's so cute. There's a bag of lemons. There's some, you know, cups sitting there. There's a little purse with some coins and uh, your little vat of lemonade. Lemonade stand. 
Very adorable. Very adorable. There is a stone garden wall in addition to the low garden hedge. And so you can put a garden wall in your yard now. Though who would want to spend one of their 20 items on this? I mean, you know, I guess, you know, if you have a bigger yard, you know, but we need more item slots in the outdoor stuff. There is a colorful flower patch, which is lovely. I love it. I adore this item. Look how pretty. It's like a little English garden patch. It's got violas and lupins and little tiny like mustard flowers or whatever they are. Um, violets, little lilies, daisies. Really cute. Really nice. Nice item. We have a Hanish lamp post. There it is. Um, there's the Hanish lamp post. Pretty cool. It's like the ones in Radzat Han. And then there is a smaller water otter fountain, which is like the one that you can build on your island, but small enough to put in your yard. And I will tell you right now that the requirements to craft this are ridiculous. The requirements to gather the items that you need um, to make it are also ridiculous. Like I have all level 90 script gear and tools and I still can't gather it. And I have, you know, over melded all of my right side gear and still don't have enough perception to gather the items. Um, so, you know, we'll see, uh, <laughs> we'll see what the next set of uh, crafting gear looks like. Um, if there is another one, I don't know if there is another one. I think I would have to just get like the, the top tier craftable crafting gear and, and up does an upgrade over the script gear to be able to do it. But, you know, whatever. Um, so that's all of the new items that were put in, uh, pretty cool. A lot of nice stuff, very neat stuff. Um, and we'll see, I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see people using these things in their houses because I think there are a lot of really nice additions. So we are going to go now to mist seven. Um, I'm going to get us there and then I'm going to take a break for just a few minutes. Uh, I got to get an ice pack to put on my neck um, because that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be icing it 20 minutes on and 40 minutes off as much as possible. So that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to go to mist seven first. And then, you know, I guess the new auction period starts tomorrow for all of these plots. I don't have enough money to buy another property right now. So I'm hoping that they don't all sell out quick because I would like to upgrade to a medium. But, you know, we'll see if I manage to get one or not. I'm not holding my breath. I'm hoping that, the, you know, they decided on how many wards to put in based upon how many people... You know, how many like excess auctions there were that didn't win, but you know, we'll see. All right. Well, people still have, um, oh yeah, this is the, Mist 7 is the zone that my free company house is in. This is where we were. Um... Anyways, I think that we got through, did we go in here? Did we look at this house? I can't remember if we did this one. Try to remember where we were. I'm lost. Yes, we did. We actually did come through this one. 
because we left. I'm pretty sure that I left a message for this person. Yes, I did. Actually, we came through here in, in um, July. Anywho, I'm going to take a break for just a few minutes and I will be right back. And why not? Why not? I'm just trying to spread some, some happiness out here in the world <laughs> by being nosy. Where are we? I wonder if we can go down here to 26. We were in that one already. We were here, right? Oh no, we won't. We weren't here. <laughs> so this is a uh, new home. Owner is Karen. Is it Karen? This is Karen's house. Please don't tell anyone how I live. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I play too much. <laughs> I play far too much. I probably should have been doing other things <laughs> when I got that. This is Kylo Ren's sister. Maybe so. Let's see what's going on inside. Karen's house. Oh, there's nothing in here. Oh, except for this. Just the big beaver burger. Poor Karen. It's no wonder she's complaining at the Costco. You know? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> That was wrong. That was wrong of me. I shouldn't have done that. All right. Well, we'll have to find another one to go to. Because there's nothing to see here. Move along. <laughs> uh, Shiragane. Let's take a look around here. Before we start breaking and entering. Um, it's a really pretty housing district. It's beautiful. They have a beach. It's not quite as nice a beach as mist. I mean, you can go swimming here. You can swim out. I don't know how far out you can swim. Let's find out. I haven't done this before. It's weeaboo mist. <laughs> oh, you can't swim very far. You get stuck right here. So that's about as far as you can go. Um, so yeah, you can't swim out very far, but it's pretty. They've got boats. They've got a little dock here. They've got, you know, some, some kind of stuff going on. It's pretty. Everything's, you know, very much in the Japanese style here. It's, it's very beautiful. Um, look at that. We'll have to check out that uh, Kugane Castle. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Oh, look, they've got a little place here where you can come on the beach to hang out if you want to. Come down here and have a party with your friends. Check out that guy's Speedo. Whoa. Why is there light shining there in that spot? That's a little strange, I gotta say. pretty higher girl she looks like she would just love to get away from this guy look at her face I can I can hear her, what's in her head it's like oh my god if this guy mansplains one more thing to me look at him he won't stop he just keeps talking and gesticulating and waving his arms he's been doing this for three years now Poor thing. I'll pray for you, honey. So that's a, 
there's a lot of housing in this game. There's a lot. There's a lot of material for me to continue looking at people's places. I could do this for the rest of my life and probably never see everyone's house. That's sad. That makes me sad. I want to see everyone's house. Really nice. Very well done. I love this house. I love every house I go in. Even the ones that other people might think are just kind of dumb. I, you know, I appreciate the time that everybody spends um, to decorate their home. You know, to put a little of themselves in, and to do something that makes them feel happy. And that's what it's about. And so I... Alrighty. Well, I have returned. We have been in this house. Um, got my ice pack stuck on my neck. So this is plot four. So we've been to plot four. Let's take a look at the map. Plot five is the Saints residence down here. Um, and I don't think that we've been in there yet. So we'll go take a look. Wait, was it Mist 7 or was it Lavender Bed 7? It was Lavender Bed 7 that we were looking at. Derp. I am such a derp. I need to write things down. It was Lavender Beds. That's why I'm like, I've been in these. <laughs> I've got some chips. They're corn chips. I'm trying to be much better about my diet because it helps it helps with the inflammation so i've been you know really uh sticking to eating a healthy vegan diet less junk food you can only have corn chips on your diet no potato chips that's so sad <laughs> corn chips are good they're at least whole grain. You know, they have some fiber and stuff in them. They're not terrible. I can't have a whole lot of them. So I'm having a few corn chips and I'm having green juice. It's like got celery in it. It's not. It's not the greatest, honestly. <laughs> I don't really enjoy this green juice that much, but I'm drinking it anyway. I can't believe that my doctor hasn't contacted me at all. You know, it's been a week and she hasn't contacted me about my, my MRI. I just don't get it. You know, I, I she's must be like so overloaded that she can't cope. I don't know. So let's see. I know we were up here. We might have only done like three let's go to the dappled stalls i think that we made it to like the first few houses because there were a lot of um oh shoot i'm going the wrong way uh there were a lot of free company rooms we'll just like head up to the dappled stalls and i'm my time tonight is going to be really kind of limited I'm already starting to have problems with my voice. I am so over this. So let's see. So there was one down there. And I'm pretty sure that we went to three. I think that we did this one here. Maybe. The Chateau de Cerisier. No, we haven't been to this one. Let me make sure that we went to two. We might have only done plot one because it was full of free company rooms. This was a really beautiful house, if I recall. Birdie. It's the Biscuit Birdies. I'm pretty sure we did this. 
I'm pretty sure we've been in here. Yeah. Oh, look, they hung up the lamp. Yeah, we did this house, and... Yeah, there's April Mary dues. Yep. So we did this house, and then we didn't get any further. We finished here. So where the heck is plot two? Plot two is, oh, it's this little, this little house up here. This one. It's Leandrin's Grocery. The owner is Leandrin Lightbringer. And the greeting is just a little, you know, looks like a little person waving hello. Let's go to the grocery store. Let's check out their yard. It's a cute little yard. Cute little lavender beds yard. I like it. Got their tree house right in front. Let's go on inside. Oh boy, look at this. Mm, excuse me, chips. So, there's the entryway. Looks excellent. Very greeny, very inviting plants and stuff. Got that nice little uh, mat, doormat. Lots of stuff for sale here cheeses and breads and potions and bottles and whatever's pastries look at all those vegetables look at the dessert cases there's more breads and stuff there this is super cute what a cute little grocery i'm gonna jump the fence and go downstairs there they've got the sink with water Merle Wib. Whoops. It's the library downstairs. I don't think that any of these are trick bookshelves. Nope. It's just regular. Nice. This shark knows how to read, apparently. The shark has its own set of books. What do you think sharks read about? I wonder what sharks read about. Let's see. How to eat things. How to swim. How to swim faster. How to swim slow. How to eat big things and how to eat small things. How to chomp. How to grow new teeth. I don't know. Or though maybe, you know, maybe sharks like to read books about people. Just like we like to read books about sharks. That's a possibility. You know, maybe Shark TV has, you know, Human Week. Where they have all the great you know, footage of sharks eating people around the world. I don't know. It's a possibility. <laughs> this is a super cute. Little <laughs> this is a super cute little grocery, but I don't see a guest book. Well, you know, I mean, you got to wonder what would be on shark TV. <laughs> All right, onward we go. So that was plot two. Very cute.
gave us things to think about and ponder. Four is closed. Let's see. Four is there. We're going up. We got to go back down here and up to go to three, which is up in the corner. So we'll go on up there to three. It's a big house. Which we haven't been to yet. Here we are. This is a Chateau de Cerisier. The owner is Zila Adag Ade Adeji. Zila Adeji, I think. Come find shelter and dancing petals and tranquil waters. Visitors are welcome as a designer home and they have a message book. So let's go. Cute yard. I like what they did with their arch. I love, love, love the wisteria trees. I think they were such a great addition. It's so pretty. It's an aura name, an aura name, probably. Their garden is ready for harvest. Everything's sparkling. Let's go on inside. I'm going to drink some more of this juice. Blech. Ugh. It just has this kind of subtle, grassy taste to it that's just, you know, it's just not good. It's not good. All right. This place is cool. They got cool music. They got gargoyles. They got Votariga. They got big dead birds by the door. Very edgy. Bookshelves. Lots of bookshelves. That all looks pretty cool up there. It's very colorful and glowy. All right. So, um, first let's go back here, a little space here. I'm not sure why the coffin would be right, right in the middle of the living room, but okay. I hope nobody's in there. There's an awful lot of books in this house. Look at all that money. Look at all this treasure. This person just sits here surrounded by treasure, you know, playing triple triad all day. Maybe they're like a triple triad champion and that's how they got all this cash. You sit here and play the tournament all day. It's a bedroom. They got breadsticks in the bedroom. Just in case. Just, you know, you never know when you might wake up in the middle of the night and need a baguette, you know? I need a baguette at night, but I never have one. I should start keeping breadsticks in my bedroom. <laughs> nice living room here. Look at that fish tank. That looks beautiful. The way they put their fish tank. I love it. So let's take a look here what they did. They used the verdant shelf partition. And they stuck their big fish tank on it. And then they used, and these are open partitions. One on either side. They used the Hingen pillars and just white partitions on either side. Um, And they put it like right underneath the chandelier so looks good that's a lot of fish how did they get so many fish in their in their fish tank do they have two fish tanks here 
<gasps> they do. Look at y'all. They've stacked a fish tank on top of a fish tank. Um, because if you look, this is saltwater fish. That's a saltwater fish. That's a saltwater fish. But then this and that and that are freshwater fish. They've got more than one fish tank here. I wonder how many they've got. There's at least two. There's at least one wooden one and one metal one. Because you can see the metal tank there. Wow. I... You know? I'm getting ideas. I'm going to stack fish tanks on fish tanks. If you turn off counter placement, I guess you can place them in the same spot. If you don't turn off counter placement, it's going to try to stack the fish tank on top of it. Because they're, they're like a tabletop. They're a tabletop item that is also a tabletop. Like the top of your fish tank is a tabletop. Um, but if you turn off counter placement, I assume that you can just kind of st stick them all in the same spot. I'm going to have to try it. Because that's... Uh, I always feel like there's not enough fish in the fish tank. And that's a way to get more fish in your fish tank. Just have more tanks. Cool. Very cool. The more you know. Let's go upstairs. Here's the kitchen area. This kitchen area has every kitchen item. It's like every stove here. There's like your step kitchen. There's your manor sink. There's your, you know, uh, the little the open hearth and the meat spinning thing. And your hanging stoves. Southern kitchen, manor stove, the original stove, your tea thing. Crystarium stove. They got every stove. They got every stove. It's probably really warm in there. And then on this side, you just got your casks and this guy here who will take your order. Cool. Let's, uh, let's go to the other side. They've stacked things up here for this display. It looks cool, though. Very shiny. Ugh. Yeah, I am not enjoying this juice. It's like sour, too. It's just like got a weird sour taste. Mm -mm. Some green juices are good. Some are not. This one's not. I'm going to stick with the beet. The beet lemon ginger one or whatever it is. That one I like. Look at all the food on this table. People must be enormous. To eat this. They're all Rogadins. Cool. More books. Got that crazy Biako chair here. Some more gargoyles. Got the crazy... Uh, this is the, the Alexander desk. It's the desk. I think. I think that's the desk. All right. Let's go downstairs and check out the basement. Oh, look. They made, this is cool. They made a little space here. So they used wooden beam and lofts, and they just took a little place here to paint over the stairs. And they stuck those steps right up against the wall there. Cool. Let's go downstairs. Gold saucer walls down here, which are nice. They're really... Um, you know, I often forget that these are a thing. Um, but it's a nice wall. It's a really nice wall. Big elephants. This is cool. This little sitting room with the elephants and the little window. Hanging couch. 
and chair. Pretty nice. I like this downstairs so far. Oh, look. It's like a little venue down here. Got couches. And on this side, we've got leather sofas and a stage. Pretty cool. And also on this other side as well. And more fish tanks. These are just singular fish tanks, though. Not stacking them up. Bathroom. I guess, you know, it's a good thing that there aren't um, fish in this little pond. You know, since people... And I'm guilty of this myself. I put it in... Uh, the shower head in the pond <laughs> but you know like would you really want to take a shower standing in this in this pond look at it there's like moss and slime in the corners and little leaves floating around it's not the most sanitary of ponds But I guess it's more for the effect. All right, I gotta take this ice off my neck. I think it's been on there long enough. Um. Oh yeah, that's it. That's the whole, wait, no, is there more? I think there's more. That was the bathroom over there. Oh, look, it's a private room. Private room with a, with stage and pull and chairs around the edges okay what's going on here we just got this room with a big couch and a, I don't think there's anything behind that curtain and nothing behind these curtains they're just curtains just a bed okay cool well they made good use of all of this space it looks nice Pretty cool. All right. Upstairs we go. All right. I, um, oh, there's the guest book. I was going to say, I didn't see the guest book, but there it is. T. Loon was here. Excellent job on this big house. Really cool and classy. I'm hoping that, you know, so I get myself some proper health care here um, soon and uh, get some school stuff taken care of, you know, that I can get back to a more regular stream schedule. We'll see. All right. <clears throat> I can probably... Do a couple more houses before I need to stop. So, whoops. Whoops, I keep hitting the wrong button. Here we are. We are at plot three. Four is not open. So we need to go down here to five. Plot five is down this way. So we'll do five and six and then um, call it an evening. And I might actually sit on my nice chair for a bit um, and play words with friends <laughs> with, with my aunt or with my cousin. Well, it's my second cousin, my second cousin. It's my mom's cousin. So she's like, you know, my older second cousin. She's really good. She kicks my ass all the time. 
Look at these cute little Lala's. What is going on here? <laughs> I'll tell her I'm going to go. I'm going to look at your house. I'm going to ask if this is her house. Is this your house? Gosh, she's adorable. Asking if it's okay if I visit with my viewers on my live stream. There we go. She's adorable. Oh my goodness. I love little Lala's. All right. So let's go take a look at the placard. Here we are. This is Mise in Place, the owner's bento box. This is a free company house. Their free company tag is bento. It says, welcome to our bento box home. Please make yourself comfortable. Feel free to eat and a snack and relax. Snuggle up. Welcome to the family. Oh, how cute. All right, here we go. Let's take a stroll around the yard. They've got the lemonade stand up. Look at that. Oh, and look, they've got the... They've got the face. Let's see. Can I see it from here? I can't. I want to go over here. I got to get up on the fence. So look, they've got the little thing with the face on the snow cave. <laughs> That's adorable. There it is. So cute. So cute. All right. They got a pile of snow and a snowman. The blue trees. Cute little corner garden there with the tree house. All looks nice. I like it. So let's uh, let's go on inside. Oh, look how cute this place is! My gosh. All right. <gasps> look, it's the serpent of Ranka. I love this. Oh my god. And they've got the starlight wallpaper up. Perfect. Scree! <laughs> you know, anyone who's got the serpent is, is okay with me. <laughs> My thoughts exactly, Monty. So, cute, cute. This is, the new, this is the new item from um, Heaven's Turn this year. This is a really cool crane banner, which I can see being used for like curtains or, uh, or whatever, you know, many things. It's very cute. Here's where their guest book is. We'll sign that on our way out. Look at their guild crest. It's a fat cat. That's adorable. Here's your Tonberry screen, Monty. This is lovely, lovely philosopher stone tables and a guild leaf counter with a bunch of stuff on it. Little snowmen. I like the way they did the windows. I like the way they did the different colors on the windows. That looks pretty cool. So let's go over here to this little area. And here's the little kitchen and vendors and retainer bell area. Made a nice window with some open partitions and wall planters, wood slat partitions, and a phasmascape. 
Oh, and look, here's the little, I, I haven't seen this in anyone's house yet. This is the first time I've seen this in someone's house. The fondue pot. It's really cute. It's it's like a, it's on fire. There's a little, you know, little uh what is it? It's like a little sterno jar or something underneath there. What do they call those? Is it a sensor? What do they call that? There's another window. Very cute. Look at there's a lalafell jumping on the couch. Here's the TV. I like it. So they used a, this is a, probably a couple maps of Eorzea stuck face to face there to make a TV on a desk. It looks good. Tonberry furniture. Beautiful vases with flowers in it. The Tonberry King chair. very nice let's i love this house it's so cute it's like everything is cute i know these are your people monty we found them we found your people in lavender bed seven in bento box <gasps> look at this adorable upstairs oh my gosh I love this. I love this room. This is so cute. Oh my gosh. I am just beside myself here. I know it may not seem like it. I'm not as enthusiastic, but my like half of my face is paralyzed and numb and I can't. Uh, ugh. What is going on? I can't wait to get proper health care. This is a cute little bedroom. I really like this. Let's go in this room. <gasps> Bathroom. They have a toilet. You're in the copied factory. Oh, cool. Well, I see you've been, you're playing. You're playing again. That's awesome. Nice little bathroom. And here's another bathroom. Got some towel racks, a big tub. This is, seems like an awfully deep tub for Lalafels. I guess it's I guess it's not too deep. Here's the shower. Two showers with the curtains in between. <laughs> it's, it's a pool. Yeah, seriously. Look at they're, they're, these are your people, Monty. Whoops. Oh gosh, I can't I can't seem to push the right buttons tonight. It's so cute. Off to the downstairs we go. Um, this is, I believe this is plot five, Monty. I'll make sure that um, I, I check on the way out. So let's go downstairs. They've got Moogle wallpaper down here. So we're in for, we are in for a treat. Look at this. This is, oh, and look, there's, look, I love, I love this portrait of Tataru. It is just too adorable. Look at it, it's so cute. Oh, and there's Kryl. Look, oh, what an adorable portrait. I love the new portraits. And this is just perfect. This is the perfect little Lalafell house. I love it. So nice. Here's their little library. It's where they plot. Plot and scheme. 
Let's see. The toy display. Here's the gold saucer. Wow, look at this. All these machines and there's your there's the the throne. This is lovely. Lovely house. There, I told her that if she remodels to let me know that we'll come and revisit. Let's find the guest book. There it is. This is the cutest house I have seen in ages. I just adore the whole thing. I need to copy this so that I don't have to r type it out again. There we go. You're going to come by after? Cool. Tell them that you saw their house online. <laughs> There we go. So cool. What a cute house. Wait, we got to go visit there. I think there's um, free company rooms. Let's see. There's a couple. My Darkness, owned by Cliff Goldberg. It's room number two. It's plot. It's plot five, Monty. Plot five, Ward seven. It says still a working progress. Need some assistance, please and thank you. Well, Cliff Goldberg, if you see this video, we are your help. We're here. We're here for you. If you want help on how to decorate a room, come hang out with us because we go visit people's rooms and you can check it out with us and learn an awful lot. We learn something new every stream. Let's check out Cliff's room. Got his little kitchen area. This looks all right. Little sitting area. It's a work in progress. He's got some nice furniture items. He's got he's got a coffin instead of a bed. <laughs> I saw the funniest thing today. One of my friends posted, I, one of their kids was like, I guess that they were, um, they were looking at through a magazine or something and there was an ad for a tea company and it was like twinnings or something. And it said, you know, making tea for 300 years. And the kid was like, for 300 years, what does that mean? And the mom was like, you know, it means that, you know, they've, they've, this company has been making tea for 300, 300 years. They've been, you know, making tea for people. And the kid's like, and they didn't die? <laughs> and she's like, they're tea vampires. <laughs> Pretty cute. But, you know, tea vampires, I mean, it could be. It could be. You know, they always say that their tea will make you live longer. But I had never really thought that it would make you immortal. But I could be wrong. This is the Cutie Cafe. The owner is Willie Formaggio. And it says, always open for guests. It's a cafe, a bakery, and an eatery. So let's um, let's go visit Willie's room. Oh my gosh, it's so pink. Let's 
I approve. I approve of this pink room. <gasps> Good gracious, look! Willie's loaded. Willie's got this fountain in his little bedroom. I can't even afford this thing. It takes deep sea marble. I'm trying to save money to get a bigger house, though. I'm trying to save up to get a medium, but we'll see. I don't know if I'll manage to get an auction. Win an auction on this server. This is really adorable, though. How cute. There's an eternity cake. They just used... Um, they used the, the regular steps to make a curving staircase. This is awesome. Cute little kitchen. It's just the right color, too. This is great. Let's go up the steps. They've floated these chairs and these hanging sideboards up here. And these tables. Macaron cushions are tabletop items, so you don't have to float them, at least. Very cute room. Well done, Willie Formaggio. We like it. We like your room. I'm impressed with this fountain. That takes some doing. All right, let's go to the next room. Private Chambers 5 is owned by Sid Hildegard. No greeting or anything. Let's see if Sid's decorated their room. Sid's got a green screen. That's it. It's a selfie room. Green carpet. Sid's got no time for decorating. Kiki's Place is owned by Naoki Sparks. It's a place to chill and relax, soft and cozy and perfect for sleepy playtimes. Shoes, pants not required. Hope you're having a good day. Much loves. Um, I'm having an okay day. I worked today. and uh, And then I just played this game. This is a very, very yellow room. This is very eclectic. <laughs> they got everything going here. All right. All right. Well, that was the last room. In this house so we'll move on we'll do one more house and then I'm gonna have to call it a night and get some rest so adorable what an adorable house Those of you who would like to visit this adorable little house, here again is Meeson Place. Bento Box is the owner. It's a free company house. Their free company tag is Bento. So if you see them, you can say you saw their house on my stream. Um, but yeah, friendly, adorable little house. Plot five. So we're going to go down and across to six and that will be the last house of the evening oh, and hopefully I will start feeling better soon this is Beast's Castle the owner is Dark Orb Alliance their <laughs> their free company tag is Adorb it says the Guild Hall of the Chosen looking forward to being a part of the Ward 7 community So here's their yard. Looks nice. They've got that linen parasol over the Riviera garden table. 
bridge and pond and willow tree and their garden is ready to harvest tree house lovely walls i think those are i think these might be riviera walls it's a mix this is like a mishmash of some riviera and some glade stuff i think everyone's favorite door Oh, I think this house is a work in progress, perhaps. Or they just like space, which is fine, too. I get so used to being in houses that are smaller um, and more crowded or cramped that, um, you know, houses that have a lot of negative space just seem very different <laughs> after visiting lots of medium and small plots. This is nice. Whoa, I keep going off the rails here, and I'm not sure why. My fingers aren't behaving properly tonight. All my stuff is messed up right now. Like, my body. <laughs> like, you know, I should have known something was really wrong when I went to... When I was on Christmas break, I tried to color in one of my coloring books. Or was it... It was in fall break. Fall break, I tried to color in one of my coloring books because I have like really cool adult coloring books and I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't stay inside the lines. Um, and my handwriting has gotten worse uh, because of the neurological problems from this thing going on in my neck that they've got to do something about. Got to do something before I become more disabled than I already am. Cute little sitting room. Fish tank library let's go upstairs lots of stained glass windows up here bathroom with lots of floor tile and wall tile i like it this looks quite nice and a wardrobe you know it's just it's a nicely appointed house with a spacious floor plan I like what they did here they made these little benches out of the desks turned backwards that's a good idea there's idea for those of you who have venues pretty cool personalized seating areas <coughs> kitchen very nice. Lots of stuff. <clears throat> Beautiful table full of food, lots of fruit. Got their starlight roast. Somebody ate everything from their dinner. I wonder if it's like the Mad Hatter's Tea Party where they just all move around to get a clean plate and there's only like three of them at a big table. Could be. Let's go downstairs first and then we'll check to see if there are any rooms. Little garden area. I like this. They've just got, you know... The glass jars on this uh, little shelf. Some flower pots. There's a Limlian's embrace at the end of this hallway. They've made this not square. They've made it's more interesting when it's not square. There, you can't get through there. That's a trick. Do 
We can go through here, though. Oh, there's, what is going on here? There's a tail. There's a dommel over there. Well, oh, look, it's a bedroom. But what about the dommel? How do you get... How do you get where that is? I'll tell you how. You go through the wall. It's the secret dommel. Behind Limlian's fountain. Oh, look. And there's a demon wall down here, too. Um, I guess... Technically, excuse me, we'll show them how <laughs> yeah, really just find a crack and push against it for five seconds and you'll go right through. <laughs> I just missed the door because it's like back there. <coughs> uh, and of course, I'm choking on a little piece of corn chip because... I can't swallow properly either. My swallowing reflex is all messed up. And I keep choking on stuff. I choke on liquids and food and whatever. My own spit. What the heck? Oh my gosh, there's a lot of rooms in this house. The tower is owned by Aspen Frey. It's room one. Let's take a look. We might have to zip through these. It's just a cute little bedroom. It's just a cute little bedroom. Gooby rug and this toy shelf. <sighs> Let's see. Next. The West Wing is owned by Azrius Frey. And it's the West Wing. So let's uh, check out the West Wing. There's a Araman down in there or something. Something is in there. It's a cute bedroom. What is this? Oh, they drank all the wine. <laughs> Let's see. Shea Pamplemousse is owned by Malcolm Pamplemousse. It's an eatery in a tavern. So let's go check out uh, Shea Pamplemousse. This is a very cute little tavern. We got some pretty tables with some foods. The Far Eastern Tavern. Little kitchen. You know, I haven't seen, um, we haven't seen any of the new furnitures yet tonight or rugs or anything. Uh-oh. It's medication time. It is the time to give the medication reminder. Too new. Yeah, I mean, it's only been a few days. Let's see. This is where we are. Bonnie's Bungalow is owned by Bonnie Pamplemousse. It says it's home sweet home. Let's go check out Bonnie's room. Cute. Look at this. Cute room. Tonberry couch. Place to sit. Eat cake. They made steps out of uh, cushions. They got some rocking music going on. Those are Riviera wall shelves. Fancy. I like it. Nice room. It's 
It's probably very bright in the daytime when the sun is up. Cool. So we are in Bonnie's room. The next one is True Fast Stone Singer's room. The greeting says Stone Song. Let's go check out. Uh, let's check out the room. I'm not enjoying this juice at all, guys. Mm -mm. In your case, the house is decorated, so you're not inclined to mess with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm. I haven't messed with my house too much. I put in that sink and that's like all I've done so far. And I'm going to put in one of those new windows. But I, I, I'm I, loath to pull it apart right now just because I don't really have a... Yeah, I'm going to... I'm not going to get this green one again. I don't like this one. It's like grassy and sour at the same time. It's not pleasant. Let's go up this ladder. Everyone's got creative ways to get up to their lofts here. All right. Maybe. I'm not sure. I have to look at the bottle to see what all is in it. I know it's got like lemon, which is sour, of course. There's some lemon juice in it, but it's also got like celery and ye yellow carrot and I don't know, some other stuff. But it's not... Mm -mm. No, thank you. When it's gone, it's gone. So we are in this one. The Nook is owned by Azalus Frey. And uh, it's just the Nook. So I guess that all of these rooms are like, you know, des designed to be like offshoots of the, the different parts of the house. It could have an apple in it. I'm not sure. It's just a cute little room. Nothing to see here. Is that... That's a partition, though. There's something behind here. It's just, you know... Why do this? Why close this off? Just this, you know... Why close off two feet? I don't understand. I'm confused. Maybe they didn't like the windows. And they just wanted to hang a painting on the wall. That's possible. So this is the nook. This is a classy establishment. The owner is Poe Labor. Um, and it's a tavern. Green smoothie at a place that has apple and it's got a sour undertone. Yeah, it might be. You might be right. Look, it's a classy establishment, and there's a gentleman in a uh, in a tuxedo who will give you some wine. There's a piano and a girl and a couple tables. Nothing fancy here. No frills. Pure class. Let's go to the next room. Private Chambers 14 is owned by Kello... Ka Kalu, Kalo, Nap. Oh my God, you people with your names, Kalu, Njalmont. I, uh, you know, this is Kay's room. We're going in. There's nothing happening here. Well, I mean, they've got a few things. They're role playing to the max. <laughs> all right next i think there's only one more room that's open private chambers 15 is owned by valkyr angerus you just think that on weird names like yours yes yes your name your name is kind of weird but it's not that weird it's at least pronounceable this is a bathhouse and visitors are welcome. Let's go check it out. It's a simple bathhouse. Very simple. Not too much going on here. 
All right. I think that's the last room. Oh, one more. Private Chamber 16 is owned by Lysandra Njalmont. Uh, again, with that name. No greeting or anything. Let's see if they've decorated their room. They have not. They may be new in this neighborhood. Let's go find their guest book. I think they're new to the neighborhood. I think that's why. Um, there's their guest book. Lovely house. And nice rooms as well. We enjoyed our visit. There we go. All right. So as much as I would like to continue, I must stop and get some rest and rest my voice and um, put ice on my neck again. <laughs> and I will be back before too long. Um, you know, this week coming up, I will try to stream uh, a couple nights so that we can make some some uh, headway. Hey, look, there's there's Monty. You have to say lolly ho. <laughs> uh, yep, that's the Lalafell that I remember. Did you go to the Lalafell house? Thanks. I enjoyed this and I'm hoping that I can stream a couple more times this week coming up and um, maybe, uh, you know, I'm just going to like write down this plot too. plot five. No, this is six. We are at plot six. Let's not forget. Next stream will start at plot seven and ward seven of the lavender beds. I want to thank everyone who came tonight. If you're watching this after the fact, hit follow and, uh, and join us again. We're glad that you came. We're glad you stopped by and, uh, hope to see you next time for more fun housing, uh, tours. Yeah, that's what we do. We just, that's what we do. We just go around and look at people's houses. Mostly. <laughs> Have a great night, everyone. Take care. Take your meds. Stay hydrated. Get some rest. And I will see you next time.